Okay, so I'm just going to cover up the screen because it makes it easier to concentrate on what I'm saying if I don't see myself talking with a seconds lag and, and mirrored. Um, so this is lecture 19. According to the schedule, it should be more graph algorithms. Uh, so in particular, um, topological sort and strongly connected components. But we've been seeing a lot of graph algorithms recently. So I thought, I, let's take a break, and I'm going to show you something a bit different. Uh, let's do string matching, just for one day, one lecture. So string matching, is an, it's a natural problem. You, you, have, uh, uh, you get a pattern P, and you want to find all the occurrences of P in a text T. So for example, if... Uh, P is A L A and T is Alabar Ala Alabarda. Okay, which means uh, worship the halberd in Spanish. So I picked this up from uh, my Argentinian postdoc uh, supervisor in Chile. He uses this as an example all the time. So where does P occur in T? So if this is position 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. This is 1, 2, 3. Well, it occurs at position 1, and it occurs at position 7. Okay, so this is 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then it doesn't occur. Uh, oh, yeah, it does occur. It occurs at position 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it occurs at position 10. Okay? So, how would you do this? So, we're going to see there are a load of ways to do this. This is a really well-developed field. Um, but we're going to just look at a few algorithms. The first thing we're going to see is the naive algorithm, which is what you do if you were a first or second year. Then we're going to see uh, Knuth, Morris Pratt, which is usually known as KMP. And then we're going to see Boyer Moore. We're actually not really going to see much about how these algorithms work because I only want to spend one lecture on this. And then we're going to see Carp Raven. And we're going to see a bit more of Carp Raven, a bit more detail, because it's a bit magic. And especially if you generalize it, then you can do things which seem like they should be impossible. So what's the na naive algorithm? Well, you would say, uh, let's suppose that length of P equals M and length of T equals N. How would you, I mean, how would you do this? this? This isn't, I mean, you could, I'm sure you could all write an algorithm for this. For i equals 1 to n, for j equals 1 to m, uh, oh, just a second. Flag equals true for j equals 1 to m. If um, pj is not equal to ti plus j minus 1. So this is, you, you're saying, okay, I want to see if, if p occurs starting in position i in t. So you're going to compare position uh, ti to p1, and ti plus 1 to p2, and ti plus 3 to pi plus 2, and so on. So this works out to be, remember, j is going to go from 1 to m. And so you want to compare ti to pj. So you're going to, it, well. Um, so you're going to, no, sorry, not ti to pj. You're going to start at i, and so 
if you're comparing the third character of the pattern, you want to compare i plus 2. Okay, so that's why it's i plus j minus 1. Okay, uh, then if they're not equal, flag equals false. And if n4 um, if flag equals true print i and if and okay so here, what we would do is, uh, if i equals 1, and then uh, flag is true, a, i equals 1, j is equal to 1, these are equal. i, is, uh, I plus j minus 1, uh, j is 2, so uh, i plus j minus 2, oops, I messed up naive. Um, you compare these two, they're equal, you compare these two equal, condition is that flag is still true, so you print 1. And then you want to see if it occurs in position 2, and so you say, okay, is L equal to A? No. Is A equal, so the condition is equal to false, is A equal to L? No. Is B equal to A? No. The flag, the, the flag is false, so you don't print anything. Then A is equal to A, flag is still true, B is equal to L, flag becomes false, A is equal to A, but the flag is set to false, so you don't print anything. And so on and so on, until you get to 7. A is equal to A, L is equal to L, A is equal to A, so you print 7. Okay, so I hope this is not hard, okay? I'm sure you could all do this. Since you survived, like, NP completeness, this should be super easy. Um, okay, how would you, how long does this take? Well, for basically all of the positions in... Um, Oh, okay. So I actually made a small mistake. Um, you don't actually go from I1 to N. You should actually go, um, it's N minus M plus 1. You need to be able to say, uh, so because you, you can't, it, it can't start here. So if this is, um, this is N, you want to, n minus m plus 1, I think. So actually, because it can't start in the last n minus m minus 1 positions of the text. OK, so if you actually just had n, you would get a sig fault because you would be comparing to something that's off the end of the text. So OK, sig faults are bad. Um, OK. So how would you actually, how long would this take? Well, um, how many times do you do the outer loop? Well, the, the inside the loop, it seems to take constant time. How many times do you do the inner loop? M times. How many times do you do uh, for each time pass through the outer loop? How many times do you go through the outer loop? Roughly N. So this is going to take O of M N time. Which, if you think, yeah, okay, so my, my pattern, say it's of length of 100, my text is of length, say, a million, hmm, 100 million, that's not too bad, but can you do better? So one thing, one way to obviously do better is uh, we would insert break here. So once you set the flag to false, you don't have to do the rest of the comparisons because you, it's not going to change the flag back to being true. Um, does that change anything in the worst case? No, because, for example, if, if the text is all A's and the pattern is all A's, then you're, you're never going to set the flag to false. And you're going to do M comparisons for every position in the text, except the last 
plus to n minus 1. Um, and so it's still going to take all of them in time. In, in practice, this is going to make things faster. Um, but can we make it faster in the worst case? And this is where I need you to remember stuff from 2110. So I need you to remember finite state machines. And I hope you learned about finite state machines. Uh, because otherwise this is going to be, well, I won't find out, but this could be an interesting class. Otherwise, you get to find out about finite state machines now, or it's online, or read it in the book or something. Um, so let's suppose it's frequently the case that the text is very long, and the pattern is, is pretty short. So like I said, a, a, a 100 characters or something, and maybe a million characters, or a few million characters. So you don't mind spending time proportional to the size, bounded in terms of the size of the pattern, if it saves you time scanning the text. So let's suppose uh, somebody gives you the pattern. Before you look at the text, somebody gives you the pattern and says, OK, is there a way you could build a little machine that will run over the text and and figure out uh, where the pattern occurs without all of this, without reading characters over and over again. And you think, yeah, okay, you, you would just, you would read the characters. You'd only read each character once because you, you'd remember what you'd seen. Okay, so we can, we can do this kind of thing with automata theory. Um, so, Let's, let's build a, a, the finite state machine that accepts the pattern. It looks like this. A, L, A. So this, this is the finite state machine that accepts only the string A, L, A. Okay, that's not what we want. What we want well, this isn't what we want either, but if we put a sigma here, now, before it was deterministic, it would only accept ALA and we knew exactly what we were doing. If we put the sigma here, this means that for any character, we're allowed to loop around and come back here. That includes A, so it's, it's non-deterministic because if I say an A when I'm in this state, then I don't know if I stay in this state or if I go here. But now, so this non-deterministic, uh, finite state machine. I'm probably going to say Turing machine at some point, but it's a finite state machine. Um, this accepts the language sigma star ALA, okay, where this is any prefix including the empty string. So it, it accepts any string that ends in ALA. That's a bit closer to what we want. But we want something that, well, what we could do is also put this on, and that will make it like this. So that will accept any string that contains L ALA. But what we actually want, we don't want a machine that just tells us whether there's an ALA in there. We want something that tells us all the, occur all the positions where ALA occurs. So we're going to abandon, not abandon, but um, change a little bit um, our ideas of financing machines from 2110. So we're still going to use a, uh, a non-deterministic finite state machine. But now we're going to say, I'm not going to do that. We're going to say, OK. We're going to put a, a loop here. No, actually, we don't even have to put a loop. We're going to say that, yeah, this is non-deterministic. We're going to output the position. So we're going to read characters. And remember, Non-deterministic finite state machines, they can be in multiple states at once. It's, well, it's actually more powerful than quantum, but it sounds a bit like quantum. 
And the idea is, so if I, if, if we start, and let's, let's process uh, this text. So we start out, um, the token is in the start state. And so we see an A, and, and the token splits. One, one copy goes, loops around and stays here, and one goes here. And now we see an L, so this one loops around. It can't go over here, but this one goes over here. And now we see an A, so this one loops around and simultaneously crosses over here. And this one just crosses over to here. And we, we say yes. So actually what we get is the position where um, we, if we output the number of characters we've read, then we actually get the ending position. So, but if we subtract from that the length minus one of the text, then we get the starting position of that occurrence. So we see a one. And now we see a B. So this token can't go anywhere, it dies. This token can't go anywhere, it dies. This token can only cross this edge. So after we read this B, we end up, we just have this token. Now we see an A, this one loops around and simultaneously it splits in half. One piece, one copy loops around, one copy goes here. Now we see an R, this one can't go anywhere, it dies. This one can only loop around, okay? So B, A, R, A, this one splits, one loops around, one goes here. Now we see an L, this one loops around, this one goes here. And we see an A, and this one loops around. Uh, sorry, this one splits and loops around, and one goes here, and this one goes here. And so we've read nine characters, so we subtract two, we get a seven. Uh, now we see uh, an A, this one can't go anywhere, it dies. This one can't go anywhere, it dies. This one can splits in half, one piece loops around, one piece goes here. And then we see an L, and this one loops around, and this one goes over here. And then we see an A, and this one goes here. And this one splits in half, one piece loops around, one piece goes here. So now we're here. Okay, so we got one to the accepting state. So we take the number of characters we've read and we subtract two. So we've read this many. So we've read 12. So we output a 10. Um, and, and then we, okay, so we've read ALA. And then we read a B. This one can't go anywhere. Um, so this one can't go anywhere. This one can only loop around. We read an A, this one splits in half. And one piece goes, uh, one piece loops around, one piece goes here. We see an R, this one dies, this one loops around. We see a D, this one loops around. We see an A, this one loops around, uh, splits in half. One piece loops around, one piece goes here. And then we're finished. Ha ha, wasn't that fun. Uh, not really. Um, so, okay, if we had a non-deterministic computer, how long would this take? Well, it would take linear lin time linear in M to build this machine, and then to, to run the text through it, it would take linear in N, okay? So in total, we would get O of M plus N. And we would be happier than if we did this in time O, M, N, because it's smaller. Okay? So, um, and we still get the answer. So, yay for automata theory. Um, the problem is uh, we don't have non-deterministic uh, finite state machines. 
Um, we don't have non-deterministic computers, not even uh, non-deterministic finite state machines. So to actually simulate a non-deterministic finite state machine, it slows us down because at each point we have these tokens floating around and we have to check for, so what you would do to actually implement this is you keep track of where the tokens are and for each token, every time you read a character, you check and see where that token can go. And so this would actually, uh, potentially you could see we, we could have multiple tokens floating around this finite state machine. Um, so potentially it's gonna slow us down by an, a factor of M so we still end up, if we, if we, have, uh, if we don't have non-determinism, uh, if we don't have access to non-determinism, maybe we could build a quantum computer, but maybe not. Um, so in real life, this takes O, M, N again. So we haven't actually got anywhere. But... If you think back to 2110, I hope you learned how to make a non-deterministic finite state machine deterministic using something called the subset construction, um, which I'm not going to teach you now. It's, it's pretty simple. Basically, you, you go through and you say, okay, well, for every, for every possible configuration of the non-deterministic finite state machine, um, so all the places where the token can be, then I'm gonna have a state in a, in a deterministic finite state machine, and then so I can, I can make a, a, a deterministic finite state machine um, with possibly an exponential. So you can turn any non-deterministic finite state machine into a deterministic finite state machine with potentially an exponential space blow up. Okay. Now in this case, that doesn't happen. You can actually turn it into a finite state machine also of size O of M. Okay. Uh, in fact, M. Or M plus one possibly. Um, but you get these things called failure links and stuff like that. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to say how you do that because if you didn't learn it in 21, I hope you learned it. Okay. So let's just hope you you know that okay. The other option is, instead of using a non uh, a non finite state machine, so instead of using non-deterministic uh, finite state machine, well, okay, I'm just, I think people usually write NFSM, turn it into a, a deterministic finite state machine and then run it. So, how long does this take? Well, once you turn it into a deterministic finite state machine, I said that it actually takes the same, the same space in this particular case for the pattern matching. Um, how much time does this, this turning it, making it deterministic take? Well, in general, it takes uh, O of 2 to the M time, because you have to do this potential exponential explosion. Um, in this particular case, I'm not going to show you how to do it because I've already gone ah, for 24 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to tell you that, um, so this actually, you've heard of Knuth before. I don't think you've heard of Morris and Pratt, at least not in this course. But this actually also involves Cook. Cook from Tomb Cook and Cook from Cook's Theorem and Cook from the University of Toronto. Um, so Cook at one point published a, um, an article saying that you could uh, recognize palindromes 
on a single tape Turing machine or something like that in, I, and I forget exactly what the time bound was. And Knuth heard about this and he thought, I don't think that can work because if you could do that, then I could build automata, I could build this automata, I'm about to tell you, he could build this deterministic finite state machine in linear time, in O of M time. So he heard about this, this theorem of Cook's and he said, I can actually, if you, if you search for it, you can find the interview with Knuth on the web where he explains this, um, looking like Yoda. Uh, he said, and I thought that couldn't be true because you, you could do this, and, and he said, yeah, I never believed that automata theory could do something I couldn't do directly. So he, he went through this and, and apparently took an example and spent a, an afternoon on the blackboard at that point, not whiteboard, um, and figured out, and he said, yeah, you could. So um, it's not hard. It involves something called the border rate. I think it might be in the book, and if it's not in the book, it's definitely online, and it's, it's cute. It uses dynamic programming and the observation that the, um, uh, the second longest border of a string is the longest border of the longest border. You don't need to know what that means. But basically what you do is you can build a, a table that tells you what this, in, in linear time, in O of M time, you can build this deterministic finite state machine um, using something called the, the border table, the border array. And, and then you have these things called failure links and, and I'm probably over the 25 minutes. So it's cool. Um, it's widely used if you type KMP and you can find out a lot more about it, but I actually really want to get to, um, I'm now at 27 minutes, I'm going to stop here, because I actually really want to spend more time talking about Carp Raven. Okay, talk to you in a few minutes.